Oh, thank you once again. Uh, let me start by saying my name is Newton Ogada, the director of God Will Provide International. And um, I've been so proud and happy to see what's going on in the organization since we started. We started very uh, simple. When we started, we began with just building the um, orphanage to accommodate the children, which we did. That was 2013 to 2015. Then after that, uh, we raised up the children and uh, we came with a, a sense of building school for them so that we don't only give food, but we give uh, education and health. Then um, after doing that, uh, I'm happy we keep on proceeding. There was a, a time that we had a problem, we, an incident that I met one girl called Beren, and this girl was actually sick. We tried to help, but we could, not, we could not help because the time was then. He passed on, and that thing touched us a lot. And then we, we, we came with an idea of running a facility by the name Berenz for remembrance of our little young girl who died. And that's now today we can have a topic of talking about uh, health, uh, hospital, and other things uh, related to health. So we are really doing good uh, in terms of infrastructure and we are doing good in putting things in order and we are doing good in following our dreams on how we can improve health sector to make it work in a better way. So as we speak now, uh, I remember we have been doing a lot of uh, outreaches outside the Berenz Hospital. We do a lot of mentorship program for the girls uh, in various different schools and we give a lot of Sunday towels and Just a lot girls. of uh, school girls. And we are, we, boys. No, boys we have done a lot. We have been giving them school uniforms, shoes, uh, so, yeah, so that we, we balance the equation. Uh, but mainly we have a good talk with both of them, both girls and both boys in different schools and we have been running this program for a while. So uh, now you know where we are, we are still in a rental building. So sometimes it limits us to do a lot of uh, medical activities because maybe you want to upgrade on something, you don't find that space in the building to upgrade. So that's why we are building the, the, the Rails Medical Hospital now and we are in almost uh, starting the second floor. And I thank God for what he has done towards that. He helped me with people who help me with finances and we actually own it. And I'm sure by January, we shall have uh, completed and go to our new facility. Um, apart from that, you know, I said, and I think I mentioned that we do a lot of medical camps, medical outreaches, visit to our various school, uh, primary, secondary, and even school that takes care of special cases. Like yesterday, we were in Waondo, in Beta, Ombe County, where we actually managed to uh, treat or to see 270 po in uh, population. And we, 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 we met different challenges and different uh, uh, diseases which are affecting them, being they're living by the lake region. And again, we we touched a lot of things when we were doing it. And when we visited the special school yesterday, we found it was pathetic. And uh, I talked with some of my friends after I visited there. We found the beds are worn out, mattresses are old, uh, blankets, blankets are not even in good place, like they're really bad. The mosquito nets are not there. And uh, even the house itself is not built to accommodate a person living with disability. So, uh, and you know, me as Newton, my interest is, is on the children. I support children and I feel so bad when I see uh, these kids going through kind of experience. So, I'm um, on my way now, uh, raising finances to make sure that uh, before the end of next week, we buy all the mattresses and we fix all the beds. And maybe if I can get more money, I need to repaint the houses and to find a way of making the place to be hygienic, like a place where somebody can stay, you know. 
that thing touched me so much yesterday because uh, being somebody is living with a special uh, uh, life, it is not because they want to be like that. It's because they, they found themselves in such kind of a situation. So when I found out that they are suffering more than other children, I did not even sleep well because I was asking myself a question. What if she or he was my child? Will I actually allow her or, or he to go and stay in such, a, such kind of a situation? So these are things that always we meet when we go to, the, to visit the people in the community. But that is not the major. The major thing is that after meeting it, where can we take them if what we are treating persists and cannot be managed by the community? That's why now we are building an hospital and we are still asking for those who can join their hands to help in the medical line, not to be rails, but wherever anybody is, we need to do something great. In uh, As a person who cares about the children, when I first saw them in the morning, when I went there, I felt there's a need of food and uh, I did not wait to go to their kitchen because my sense, has, my, my, my sense are really correct. Uh, we went and we bought uh, some food stuff like rice, uh, uh, cooking oil, some uh, uh, um, flour for the ugali, and some soap to wash them, their clothes and what have you. Yeah, we did some kind of feeding program to them and uh, I was very happy to see them happy when I brought those things into uh, their place. And I have some uh, uh, interaction with uh, those, the people taking care of the children there. They told me their life is not easy even for them, you know. So, yeah, that's why I have to go back again and see what I can do better. My, my, my will or my wish is to f show everybody love because they need it. They miss it. And that's exactly what Jesus said, that we are, if you're a true Christian, you need to show people your love. You, you need to act and you need to do something when your friend, your brother, your sister is in pain. And that is our mission. We have to make sure that we reach out to the people. We have to make sure that we give whatever we have. We have to make sure that we do according to the will of God. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say that the government eats its own children or eats our own children. Because when I visited this uh, school, it's a government school. It is not a private school. And when I look into uh, the regulations that they have been putting into our private organization, what they want us to, uh, the, what they want from us as a requirement, according to the secular, is not applicable there. When you go there, nothing applicable on what they have been asking for us to have a school, a special school, or an orphanage. And I remember, if I'm not wrong, that uh, since uh, I got into this uh, management, the government official, the children officers have been to my institution maybe five, six times a year, just to supervise and to check on record if I have what it takes to take care of a child. But when I walk into their own, I there is nothing comparable. You cannot compare what I was witnessing myself and what I have myself in my own institution. But I think um, it's not about even the ministry in Nairobi or in the county, but it starts from the grassroots. Uh, I think our local leaders does not care about what is happening in the government institution. And the officers who have been on duties to check on this they have no time to go in these places because, number one, even if they go, nobody will give, give them fair back. When they come to our institution, somehow we have been demanded to give fair back because they're doing their inspections, which I have no problem because maybe somebody is coming from a long distance way. So I think they neglected the government institutions because there's no proper... Uh, communication on what is happening there. But I'm, I'm, I'm just appealing to the government that we don't have a child belong to private institution and we don't have a child belong to government institution. All the children, the special uh, ones, the widow, I mean the orphans, uh, they all belong to Kenyans and they are Kenyans by birth. 
and they are not belong to even any neighbor country. So we should treat them equally. For the those who are running private se sectors, should be treated equally as the government runs the same projects. So that is my uh, observation on this, and it's not the only one school that I saw. It is all the schools I've seen. The government institution somehow they sleep a little bit when it comes to their own in their own uh, supervision. The professor, the doctor, is coming from Netherlands. His purpose to be here is to train us as the rails uh, facility or the rails hospital staffs to learn more about um, how we can manage uh, the health facility because him personally is a doctor and him personally he has a lot, a lot of experience uh, regarding the to the Ministry of Health. He worked even in Kenya with uh, Charity Gilu, he worked with all these professors before. And now he's working with um, an organization back in AIG, Netherlands, uh, called PUM. We approached them and we wrote to them if they can send an expert to come and train us on the issue of management and uh, implementation and uh, improvement of the hospital. So that's why uh, the professor is here and it's really helping us a lot. And is actually, I believe, me, with him and with the connection, we are going to have the best healthcare, the best facility, because we are we are now working on programs attending to health. We soon starting home visit. We want to have home nurses, who, those who can just visit the patients at home, and then uh, check their status. And if it is not uh, worth to be at home, then they will be brought to the hospital at any given time. So him being here is. Uh, is actually a plus to the brains and uh, we are hoping to meet with the Minister of Health and Chief Officer on many times soon so that we can discuss the abroad uh, uh, health because uh, health is not private and health cannot be in one room health is uh, health is health and health is everywhere so we have to talk about it with the minister and to see if his being here can help our county on trainings and uh, organization on how we can improve on health. I think that is the great thing that Henry is going to do. So that's why he's here. My name is Lucy Okelo. I come from Oyukis, uh, but we work in a hospital called Berenz Medical Center. Uh, we are here out today to do an outreach. We were called because there was a need in two specific places. There are school, a special school called Hope Special School, and also there is a primary school called Waundo. So we came here to offer medical services. We keep on reaching out to different people where there is need. Uh, so today we came to do the, con we are offering consultation, mostly to the school going children. We are offering some lab services, and we are also giving treatments. Whatever we've seen today, uh, we've done a lot of deworming in the kids. Uh, we also are able to test. We found out some people, some pupils have malaria. We were able to give them treatment. Some of the kids at the special school also had some special requests because of their condition. So there were some special treatments that we given to them. So we'll keep doing this. We chose to come to Mbita because the area here we are sitting, we are working on. It's a bit far. There's a, a, it's a few, um, some kilometers, uh, so that you can get to the next health center. So we saw there's need, and it would have served better to the special group of kids. So let me quickly re-summarize that I'm here because there's an organization in the Netherlands called PUM Pump, and they have a special budget uh, given by the Dutch government uh, to facilitate experts quite often experts that are in pension to go to projects and organizations and small and medium enterprises in developing countries, low and middle income countries, where they share their experience and their expertise with small and medium enterprises that have requested to the local representatives of PAM. 
there's one in Kisumu and there's one in Nairobi and there are a few more in Kenya. So um, already a while ago, I registered as a retired health system expert with SPAM. And when the request from Kenya came, of course, my profile popped out because I worked in Kenya for seven and a half years from 1998 till 2005 and uh, in the health sector. Uh, at that time, mainly in the reproductive health sector, uh, a program called Community-Based Distribution of Family Planning in Kiswahili, Kupangaya Uzazi. And um, this program was a very rural program. Uh, and it was also in Homa Bay. So I've come back to where I used to work almost 20 years ago. Um, I see that some things have changed enormously. Uh, and I've seen also that some levels of poverty are here today, like they were here 20 years ago. And I think the visits that we have just done to a school for special children is a sad uh, evidence of that uh, limited progress Kenya has made in some sectors. Um, however, the application of Barrels Hospital with SPUM to have somebody to help them to plan for the future um, is, is an initiative that PUM likes to support uh, for the simple reason that access to quality and client-centered care is the very important for the Kenyans. Um, and although the government of Kenya and the Minister of Health is doing their best to um, provide access to care from level two to level six, and even at level one, uh, the building of the community um, health promoters is a, a notable development. There is obviously a need and a market for private sector um, provision of healthcare, um, but it needs to be done in a sound and in a healthy way. This is very important because if these projects fail, it is to the detriment of the Kenyans that need that access to care. So that is why the government of Holland is not only supporting the Minister of Health, but they're also supporting private sector health care. Um, one observation I would like to share with you is that it is very important for uh, the private sector to find efficient ways of cooperation. Now, normally, private sector business is used to work in competition. But the health sector is not a, a really for-profit sector like, like building materials, right? Because you're working with people and many of them are poor. Um, and, and quite some of them do not invest in an NHIF card. So they then have trouble in visiting health services. And um, I really hope that we can create in Oyugis a business plan that takes in account that if the players in the field of healthcare, if they are not efficiently and effectively working together, that they in the end will all lose out. And um, to give you an example, yesterday we made a map of Homa Bay and we started indicating where are which health centers, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. And, and it's a very crowded map. And therefore, I, I hope that we can uh, get a situation whereby basic health care is provided by all, but that they all seek an area of excellence in which they are good, so that not everybody tries to be good in everything. Um, this is a development, this is a development that you also see in Europe and in, in, in highly developed countries, is that not anymore does every hospital provide cardiac surgery for children. This is becoming concentrated. And I hope 
that uh, in Oyugis we can find over the coming 10 years a way of identifying which hospital would be good in something. And like Oyugis, in Oyugis there are a lot of peaky peakies and a lot of accidents. And for acute trauma, where do you go? And of course you can say we are all going to have x-ray machines and everybody will have orthopedics. But then you don't build up experience because you need concentration of experience. And people need to know, if I break my leg, I go there. If I have a heart attack, I go there. If I have a complicated delivery, I go there. Um, and that way, I think there is place for more players in the health sector um, without um, competing each other to death.